Hello, I'm Subhu Subramaniam. I'm part of Cisco Services with responsibility for smart services, install based management, and security platforms. I'm also a mentor in the Cisco Entrepreneur in Residence program. The Cisco EIR program is an innovation program designed for early stage startups focusing on solutions that are of strategic importance to Cisco. Today, we have with us Larry Lunetta, the CEO and co founder of Perisecure, and Diraj Sharan, the co founder and CTO of the same company. Perisecure is a company focusing on the enterprise security space, specifically on apps and analytics. Larry, Diraj, welcome. Thank you, Subhu. Thank you, Subhu. Can you tell us a little bit more about the solutions you're working on in enterprise security? As he mentioned, Petasecure is focused on building enterprise security applications and analytics to find difficult to manage and difficult to detect uh, advanced persistent threats, insider threats, and other kinds of attacks that enterprises are struggling with. And as you'll hear, we're using big data technologies, things like Hadoop, uh, to provide the innovation that a chief security officer needs to manage this threat environment. It's no secret that the IT ecosystem has gotten at once more complicated and the threats more lethal. And this is a sample of the kind of headlines that uh, drives uh, chief security officers to find new solutions. Um, it could be uh, a trusted insider. It could be a threat that had 11 steps in it, as in the case of Target, uh, before it did its damage. And now this emerging world of Internet of Things uh, with the specter of it being a source of threats as well. That leads to a new paradigm and one that we're very much focused on. And if you talk to a chief security officer, they all say, despite our best efforts and all the great technology we have, we know we cannot keep everything out. So where we're focused and where they need the help is what we call post real-time threat management. The idea that the job doesn't stop at T0, that's where it really starts. And if you want a, a picture of how we look at the world, uh, the only way to find uh, these difficult uh, attacks is to look at behaviors because a, a threat that has 11 steps in it and takes three months to unfold isn't a, a fuse on a stick of dynamite. Um, it's a very subtle set of new behaviors inside of IT that when aggregated and understood in proper context will tell a security analyst that there's an attack underway. So part of our technology is establishing normal behavioral baselines and looking for deviations from that and using that knowledge to find threats before they do their damage. So this is a third generation of product or defense that uh, IT professionals are looking to to help them. So the first generation were the sensors, the firewalls, the IDSs. Second were the log processors. These are products like ArcSight, Splunk, and others where all the alarms and alerts are aggregated and there is some amount of uh, intelligence applied to find the true threats and attacks. Well, that technology has reached its limit. And now Gartner has defined a third generation, which they call BDSA, Big Data Security Analytics, that starts where the log processors leave off. So the idea is to build a data lake where as much raw security relevant information is, is put in something like HDFS, and then use a set of analytics and processes to pull out of that what's important from a security standpoint, and then use new analytics like machine learning that require massively parallel processing to do their work. When we talk to chief security officers, we ask them what their problems are. What, are they, what keeps them up at night? And this is just a sampling of the things that they tell us. Many of this is, are, are things that you would readily understand. First is to look at uh, these slowly gestating threats that are in the, inside the IT environment and find them before they do damage. And that's where a lot of our applications and intelligence is applied. Uh, another one is to look 
inside their log aggregation and security information to see if an externally reported threat, something that comes out of, for example, the Cisco CIO service, or excuse me, the SIO service, uh, to see whether or not that's actually in their environment. Uh, the idea of improving the efficiency and effectiveness of security investigations is always top of mind. And we continually hear about white noise, noise that, uh, that masks the true threats that they're looking for. So before Diraj goes through the demo, I wanted to give you a little bit more detail on our architecture. So think of the data lake that Gartner talked about at the bottom, uh, where we bring in not only logs, but other kinds of information that's relevant from a security standpoint. And our IP and, and innovation starts at the next layer, which is where we take those raw logs, run them through something called a distillation process, much like a smelter, uh, pulling out the real ore and, and gold, if you will, that's in those raw logs, and then building something called dossiers. And dossiers are prefetched summaries of security relevant information on IT entities, something like an IP address, an application, a user, a sensor, a mobile device. And that's where we start with our applications and machine learning and other types of analytics. So when you see the demo, you'll know that when an analyst can look at a dossier instead of logs, uh, you'll see how much more efficient they can be. One last point about our architecture, uh, we can deploy on-prem, we can deploy in, in cloud, or we can do a combination of both. So it's very flexible and something that makes our partners and our customers uh, very comfortable with in terms of their own IT ecosystems. So now that you know something about our uh, motivation and our product architecture, I'd like to turn it over to Diraj for him to go through the demo. Diraj? Thanks, Subhu and Larry. Thanks uh, for uh, this opportunity. So in this demo, what uh, we were going to do is that uh, there, there are two distinct personas, actually, of the analysts coming and using the product. So for the first persona is that tell me something that I don't know. Tell me about what, what is the threat that you have found. And uh, the, the second persona is that, OK, uh, I want to do some investigation on my own and then see what I can dig up. So give me the right tools for that. So those are two demos we'll see. So let's start uh, with the first one, where uh, we inform the analyst that there's something wrong with this particular IP address in their network. And uh, here is the information on that. So uh, the analyst uh, comes, to the, comes to our console, and uh, we provide the right information, the right threat scores, the right component scores, explaining where the threat is coming from. And this is all prefetched uh, data that's uh, in front of them to help them get the answer of where the threat is. And they can drill down from there to get to uh, a summary of what was our data used to compile this information. And from there, they can drill down further to go and look at the raw log as well. So as you can see, it's uh, three layers of uh, information coming up at the top where we tell them where is the threat and uh, how they can work with that threat, uh, investigate that threat further. So uh, that was the first one. Let's look at the second one, where uh, basically it's the analysts. Now they are uh, uh, interactively looking at things that they want to investigate on their own. So here they start looking at, OK, let me look at some cron jobs that are running. They see that. And then uh, they uh, want to find out, OK, uh, let's look at uh, what's uh, the frequency of these cron jobs. Uh, how are they running every hour? And uh, we give them that interactive uh, real-time interface on top of uh, big data. And uh, they get that information. And the next thing they want to see is that, oh, let's, uh, let me find out, is there any anomaly in the cron jobs that are being run? So they put all that command in, in a nice, easy to use in, in, in that interface. And then uh, that's when they see the results there, where they can even do more advanced things like training and uh, create models, and then uh, check, evaluate data against those models. So that's uh, what we have here. So, so basically, what we saw in uh, these two videos is uh, the use case for uh, both uh, analysts, where uh, we are telling them where is the threat, where is the information coming from, and we are also providing them right tools for investigation. Thank you. That's a great story, Larry and Deeraj. Uh, certainly a topic that's front and foremost on every CIO's mind as they're trying to keep the, the bad guys out, as you guys characterized it. Now. Both of you come from ArcSight, and uh, you've done a lot of similar work there. Um, are you able to leverage some of what you learned there in building this product? That's a great question. You know, collectively, Diraj and I have over 20 years 
together at ArcSight. And if you remember that diagram of the generations of solution, uh, ArcSight is a log aggregator. So we were at the front edge of what technology could do when ArcSight and other products like Splunk came onto the market. And the idea of, of dealing with big data back then was a relational database, but the same principles applied. And uh, we understand what it means to be at the top of the security pyramid, which is where these functions sit. And it was Deraj who came to me and said, gee, I'm seeing an opportunity to use Hadoop to actually uh, move the ball forward for this solution. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The, 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 the volume of data has really increased. Mm -hmm. Analytics, uh, doing analytics on that is really difficult these days. So that's where you have to leverage the power of uh, a, parallel pa or a parallel platform mm -hmm. where the, the human and the platform can work together to detect things that, that they could not detect earlier. Certainly. And, and I recall you mentioned dossiers and personas. Um, does that approach give you a unique advantage in terms of how you compile this information and uh, provide uh, the help to the analysts? Yeah, uh, yeah, that's completely true. So that's uh, that actually leverages uh, and makes the, analy uh, the analysts more uh, productive. They have right information on their fingertips. They have right information on what threats to follow. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's without this, it's really hard for them to spend their time productively and look at threats by themselves. Awesome. Great. I mean, if you think about it, uh, an analyst to assemble a dossier out of raw logs may go through 40, 50, 100 different searches. They may use different databases. So the idea that you can get that amount of information with a single click is an amazing force multiplier. And then to use that as the baseline to apply things like machine learning uh, elevates the uh, precision of the threat detection. So a dossier, as I said, is like a new data type for us. Mm -hmm. And we apply it for security, but we've had other folks look at it and say, gee, um, I can take my IT operations logs and build dossiers and use them in the same way. So while we're not in that domain, mm -hmm. we see dossiers as really a pivotal point in terms of getting out of the sludge of logs and moving into a much more efficient environment. Awesome. Certainly a, a tremendous opportunity space for you guys to continue to explore. Uh, we really thank you for being part of the EIR program and wish you the very best. Well, thank you very much. Sabu, you've been a terrific mentor. We really appreciate that. Thank you. And the Cisco family has been very welcoming to us. And we know that there's a lot of things going on and we've met a lot of different groups and a lot of different people. It's all been very enjoyable and very productive. Uh, but we know we haven't met everyone. So we're hoping that folks that see this will have an idea about big data and machine learning and uh, how to apply this to their environment. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks again.